Hey everyone, my name is Arjun Furry and this is my semester project for Plant Pathology 315 with Dr. Shu at North Carolina State University. I decided to work on fire blight because this is one of the diseases that really caught my eye during lecture and although it's more prevalent with pears, I decided to use apples because frankly I prefer apples to pears. So this is the home page I decided to make a website for. Um, I thought website was the best tool because I wanted it to be interactive while at the same time informative and I'll get to that in a second. But the first page just shows a pretty simple picture of a, a few symptoms. You can see that um, the leaves are charred up and the stem is kind of breaking which is which one of the main symptoms of fire blight. And below here is just a few um, you know, about us information and here's some contact information for me. And let's move on to the next link. This is a bacterial pathogen, so I decided to give a little introduction uh, to bacteria. And as you can see, it's uh, here's a simple picture. You can see it's rod shaped, which many of the bacteria for plant pathogens are. And bacteria are microscopic prokaryotes that have no nucleus. They're unicellular, cellular and they use flagella to move as you can see right here. Um, the growth cycle for bacteria is really interesting. They, of course, as you know, grow exponentially, but that's not what all they do. Um, they start with a lag phase, which in this particular period, right from here to here, they kind of build up on nutrients that they're going to need to divide and survive on once they have divided. And that leads into the log phase, which is, as you know, the exponential rapid growth when they go from a couple cells to a couple million, million an hour. Um, and then after they get to, after they complete the log phase, when the binary division or division is going on, the stationary phase is next. And this is a simplified graph, but what you really see is a slight up and down pattern right here like I'm showing with my mouse but since for uh, just to make it simple this is a stationary phase it's a straight line this is not where the bacteria start to die but this is where the nutrients are starting to run out at the end of stationary phase right here this is the beginning of a depth phase where the nutrients the essential nutrients for the bacteria have run out and the population is now definite definitively declining. Here's a simple introduction to plant uh, pathogen bacteria. Um, unlike uh, fungi, they actually penetrate uh, through natural openings and wounds. And once they do, they don't necessarily attack the cell, but they sit in between areas of the cells and kind of release specialized toxins and proteins that deteriorate the cell, the host cell from within. And of course, as you know, they affect leaves, stems, roots, and sometimes all three. They, they can be really devastating, as this disease actually is. The next link is, I wanted to give a quick introduction to apples. Everyone knows what they are. Everyone's had one. But um, I thought a quick introduction would be nice and a few fun facts. They come from a specific uh, tree species right, listed right here. Mylis domestica, and it's one of the world's most cultivated fruits. Actually, in 2010, almost 70 million tons of, of apples were grown worldwide, and astonishingly, 50% of this production was from China. And the United States is second, but we set a, a mere 6% the worldwide production. So, as you can see, this is a relatively, re relatively, you know, predominant fruit in both Asia and then and the North and North America and of course in Europe as well. It actually originated from Europe and Asia and was brought over to North America not even four hundred years ago. And, um, apples are susceptible to fungal and bacterial diseases of course. The next link is the introduction to fire blight. Fire blight is a devastating bacterial disease that affects apples and pears. It can attack entire trees or orchids, or orchids, and really, 
can ruin season after season for farmers, and that's why it's so important and so important to avoid. Uh, the pathogen is listed here. The pathogen is Irvina emilivora. Please excuse my pronunciation. It is a gram negative bacterium, and it is, of course, rod shaped and is discovered by Urban Frank Smith. The, this particular bacteria actually secretes pectolytic enzymes, that is, it kind of destroys the pectin in between the plant cells and aids in destroying the host. The symptoms of fire blight are actually, um, it's named after fire blight because of the symptoms. Uh, you can see in this image here, you can, the plant is pretty much charred up and breaking down right in front of you. And that's why it's called fire blight. It looks like it was on fire. The cankers are, are actually develop. The cankers actually develop on the sides of the trees and limbs. And cankers are really really interesting because the cankers is where the bacteria overwinters and comes out from in the springtime. So it can actually kind of go dormant for a whole winter time and come back when the temperature is about 20 21 degrees Celsius. That's really interesting, and that also adds to the fact why fire blight is so devastating. Dispersal methods are pretty common for this for rain when insects and birds are the main vectors of this particular pathogen. And also, small amount of humans actually accidentally kind of move this vector or this pathogen, pathogen around because of accidental damage, mechanical damage that comes from the typical farming. Uh, requirements of an orchid. This pathogen, this, the, disease, the disease fire blight actually occurs in three stages. The first stage is blossom blight, whereas the infection spreads from blossom to blossom, and this is of course with the help of rain and bees, and then the infection gradually moves down to the branches, which actually leads to the second stage of fire blight. Which is, which is called canker development. The cankers develop on the sides of the trees and can be seen as sunken lesions that are kind of dark in color. This is where the pathogen kind of goes dormant and wants to wait uh, for the cold to pass, literally. And the skin around the trees is, you can see, kind of looks like an onion texture, the onion skin, so it's really thin. That's when you know that you have been infected by some kind of bacterial pathogen. The third stage is shoot blight and during wet weather the bacterial pathogen infects young and tender shoots and it starts from the bottom and kind of rises up pretty much eating up the whole tree. Um, as I mentioned before the pathogen can overwinter in cankers and once the temperature is hot enough again about 21 degrees Celsius 70 degrees Fahrenheit the pathogen can come out multiply and spread to other plants in the area. You can see here the seed cycle. I could have made this on my own, but I adopted it from some research I found just because it's already well made here and I didn't want to recreate something that was already perfectly made. But you can see that there's a secondary cycle, which means that the disease is polycyclic and several disease cycles or several disease um, diseases can occur in one season which is what we find here. And again, that's a polycyclic disease. The next link talks about control. And the three methods are listed here. The first one is reduce the number of dispersal of the primary inocu inoculum. Basically, removing the elements of what make a disease a disease as far away as possible from each other is one of the smartest things you can do. It doesn't really require further damage to your your crops or your plants, but is it is vitally important to reduce the, the uh, disease inc disease incidence. The second method is preventing blossom infections. This, of course, is the first stage of fire blight, and preventing it is extremely important. And this can be done by using some kind of antibiotic spray or the copper bactericide that can be used. And, of course, with the whole push for organic crops and fruits and everything, this isn't something that's preferred, but it, it is still a viable option for 
a control practice. The third and final method is reducing the secondary inoculum. When you know your farm has been hit by this disease, you'll see branches breaking down on the ground, and you might think to yourself that since they're dead, they're no longer harmful, but that's totally not true. As I said, the cankers do develop on the branches, and inside the cankers are the um, is a pathogen resting and waiting to come out. So you do want to dispose of all these branches that are broken down just to reduce any chance of a uh, secondary infection. Below here in this, in this image, you can see kind of a vast difference between a healthy group of plants and a plant that has been infected by fire blight. Now, I did want to make this website really interactive, like I mentioned before. So I developed a comment section here. And with here, anyone with this comment section, anyone can kind of come in and leave comments and talk about if they've been affected by this disease, or, or if they want to post a picture and, and actually ask other experts in the area if this is indeed fire blight, they can do that. So I thought this would be a great way just to add some cum like add some social networking to my website, which is something I'm aiming for. I don't want I want it to be educational and interactive. The last link is, of course, the wonderful references that I adopted for this uh, website. Most of the stuff on the bacteria slide, uh, bacteria link, came from Dr. Shu's lecture notes, which are, of course, amazing. Um, if there's any other further information, you can always go to these websites listed below. And this is my website. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, I would love any suggestions or recommendations that you want me to add or expand upon. But other than that, I hope you guys had a good semester. Thank you very much.